the River Amazon. Flowing for 4,000 miles, it holds one-fifth of all the fresh water on Earth, the source of life for some of the greatest wonders of nature. But only one creature truly captures the spirit of the Amazon, the colossal anaconda. The biggest of these snakes are believed to be more than 30 feet long, but their terrifying appearance inspires reports of 60 feet and more. Reptile hunter and scientist Mark O'Shea has come to the mouth of the Amazon, where the river is 200 miles wide. His ambitious long-term plan is to chart the evolution of the anaconda by sampling DNA from all three known species. On this trip, he's aiming for two of them. These river islands are home to Deshaunsi's species, the rarest of the anacondas and the most difficult to find. And Mark will also face the green anaconda, the largest snake on Earth. In water, it's an awesome predator. Weightless and highly mobile, it can take a caiman, an eight-foot-long relative of the alligator, and swallow it whole. But these constricting coils of pure muscle have also been known to trap humans in a grip from which there is no escape. Mark's quest begins in the bustling Brazilian port of Belém. All the produce of the Amazon is traded here, even its animals. Mark hopes to find his first sign of the anacondas. This is a skin of a boa constrictor, head and legs of a green iguana. Skin of a boa constrictor. This is a tegu skin. Preserved boa constrictor. Two live boa constrictors in a jar. I don't think they're destined for the pet market. Much more likely into some sort of medicinal product of dubious uh, value. It's very sad to see animals like this, but the Indians have been doing this for centuries, and it probably has a very limited effect on the wild environment. This jar says Habo de Jiboa, which is boa constrictor tail. In actual fact, this should say Habo de Sukari, because this is an anaconda tail. The search for live anacondas begins on Marajo, the largest river island in the world. It's home to both species Mark is looking for. But Mark believes Deshaunsi's anaconda is more closely related to the third species, the yellow anaconda, which lives 1,200 miles away. He needs DNA samples to have his theory tested genetically. Mark and his translator are joined by a reptile expert Alex Zanetti from the Butantan Institute, one of Brazil's leading laboratories. It's the dry season, and the lagoons should be emptying, leaving the anacondas in the shallows and much easier to find. I like to work with my uh, spider's web method, where I sit in the middle of the spider's web and I let the messages go out to villages that um, I want to be told when a snake turns up and then I'll go over there and catch it. Mark can't sit still while he waits for his spider's web to bring in news of the anacondas. A wood pile near the team's base is a likely spot for small but deadly venomous snakes. Well, there's probably snakes in there. It's a lot of work, yeah. yeah. Well, we may as well have a go at it. Mm -hmm. But whether they're actually completed is another thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch out for scorpions as well. Something's gone under there, and I... 
There's definitely something under here, and I don't think... It might have been a snake. Wait, oops, oops, a snake. A Where? snake, right here. Oh, Bartrop. Oh, yes, Bartrop, super. We have a venomous snake. There's a hole there. I'm going to try and hook him up. Watch your back. That's got it. That's, got it. That's uh, one of the lance heads. And there are three potential species that that could be. But it will require closer examination when we get back to determine exactly which one it is. A scale count identifies the snake as a baby of the common lancehead species. Cute little baby, isn't it? It's, uh, it's really cool. you, you work mostly on baby snakes. Você trabalha com cobras pequenas, com filhotes, né? They need more attention, they need yeah. special care. Elas, yeah. As babies, these snakes eat small, fast-moving lizards, so they need a fast-acting venom to kill the lizards before they get away. The prey are lured by a white tail which looks like a wriggling worm. Baby snakes quite often seem to be more toxic than, than, than adults, so you can get quite nasty bites from relatively small animals. Alex took a venomous bite while feeding one of these snakes in the lab. A day in intensive care kept him alive, but he has a permanent reminder on his thumb. For reptile experts, it comes with a job. I was uh, bitten by a rattlesnake in, in the forest up in, in Horaima, and I was 12 hours before I got to hospital. Where did, where, where did, where did it go? Uh, that one, that, that was, uh, I have to think, in the thumb. That the same. Yeah, mine too. Mark's spider's web brings news of the anaconda from a local farm, and the team saddles up for the journey. Mark is allergic to horses because the anti-venom he's been given in the past for snake bites is cultured in living horses. But you can't keep a good man down. I'm going to get one of these. Fuel economy is not bad. The farm has a deep pond covered in vegetation. That's hopeful for anaconda's look. But hope soon turns to sadness. That's a meter. It's got an arrow on its head. Tem uma seta na cabeça que parece a deixão, sim. See, there are black spots on its back, but there are far more than you would see in a green anaconda. And in some cases, the ones on either side of the body are actually joined to create a big, wide blotch. The more I examine this specimen, the more I become sure it's Deshaunas's anaconda. DNA, mitochondria, no? It's a tragedy. Even young anacondas are feared by the locals, and the butchered snake is too badly decomposed for a DNA sample. Mark heads for the pond to look for live snakes, and is soon up to his neck in trouble. The ponds are not as dry as they should be, and in deep water, the anaconda's in its element. This is the preferred method of finding anacondas. The idea is to move across, and if you poke an anaconda, the whole place starts to move, and you can work out where it is. And it's very smelly and very sticky. Maybe the spider's web approach has gone too far. Mark's catching plenty of flies, but no snakes. It's very depressing. Perfect habitat. But they are totally eluding us. They're there but the water levels are still surprisingly high for this time of year. It's a month later than when I was catching them in Venezuela uh, several years ago. And uh, those lagoons are drying. They're still uh, pretty full here. Mark gives up on Marajo and flies north to the island of Caviana. Farm workers there have reported a massive snake, but Mark will be racing against time to capture it.
The anaconda was spotted on the island at low tide, but as the water rises, it could easily escape to the river. I wonder why I'm walking like this, it's because you get stingrays on these sandbanks, and it's better to shuffle and chase them away than actually step on them. The anaconda is in an underground stream. Mark will have to get it out quickly before the stream is flooded by the incoming tide. Are we getting close yet? Yes. But when did I see it? You know, when? Yesterday? Today? No, today, in the morning. There's every possibility between I'm seeing it and us getting hit, it's moved on. At the moment, there's no sign of the anaconda. More digging is needed to find out if it's escaped. Does this run all the way to the river? Yeah. That's a lot of digging. Yeah. hour after starting to dig, and they're finally making some progress. The farm workers are happy to help, as long as Mark is first to put his hand down the hole. Yes. There's a big snake in there. Yeah. I can feel its flanks, and it is a big snake. Yep, definitely. I'm going to touch it very gently. I don't want to be pulled down the hole. Bloody hell, is it? Yep. <laughs> You're moving, yep. OK, it's here. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well done. Yeah. Right, now, priority, priority. We're going to limit it. OK. So we want to block these. A gente vai ter que tampar esse buraco. A gente vai tampar ali na frente para não varar para lá. It is beginning to start flooding, isn't it? So we're going to be working against time as well. This is the danger time. If the snake feels threatened, it may strike. Something Mark has experienced before. I caught one like this in Brazil, 987, down a hole. And I did pull, it was a green anaconda up in the north in Horaima. And I pulled the tail out, and I'm holding the tail, thinking, what next? And the snake actually came up through the mud of this drying stream bed, straight up through the mud, looking for me. Didn't come up the hole, came, just punched straight up. And I had to dive on him quick before he found out where I was. Mark still doesn't know which species of anaconda is down there. There aren't many places in the world where you can locate a large snake down a hole and have a choice of species as to what it might be. See if his head's appearing. We saw the head here. Yeah. Pretty sad head. Good size. Yeah. This is a big snake. This is a very big so. snake. So big, in fact, that Mark will have to struggle to free it. I can't even get my hand around that, that coil. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and he's wedged himself in. And squeezing him and poking him, he pulls his tail in. But he doesn't seem to bother about going anywhere. He probably feels fairly invulnerable. So I think at the moment we are going to have to cut more of this away. There's his nose. There's his nose. In the corner. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't be able to pull him backwards out of there with a the tractor. They still have to be careful. They've cornered a very dangerous predator. They recovered a bit of a flank here. You want to help? Not yet. We're going to see what it's going to do. Suddenly, his head might just appear a mud and grab one of us. What? What are you doing? What? What? No. I don't think it. Yeah. Well, I think they saw the head appear here. Fighting time and tide, Mark can't wait any longer for the snake to come to him. I'm hoping it's not going to bite. I just can't see where, the, where it's gone there. That's a head. 
It's coming up now. Get the coil out. What? Get the, the grab the body. Segura, segura o Somebody grab the body. Somebody grab the body. Pega a volta, pega a volta. Vou puxar. Vou puxar. Agora. Agora pode. Que lá. Força. Isso. Isso. Isso aí, tá enrolado, ó. The moment of truth has arrived. It could be the rare Deschamps anaconda or the giant green anaconda. <laughs> This is one big mother. <laughs> and this, even with the, the mud on, looks like a giant green anaconda. This snake is big enough, if it caught you off guard, to kill you, especially if you're in the water, because you'd probably drown, because the weight of this around you. He has a sizable set of teeth. He has six rows of sharp recurved teeth, four in the upper jaw, two in the lower jaw. And they're in sheaths of skin in there. You can see the upper jaw teeth in the roof of the mouth. We're going to have a job getting it back, but I think we do need to take this back. We'll measure it and weigh it properly. Getting it back is going to be the interesting part. Mark wants to study the green anaconda more closely, but they'll have to take it to a ranch on the island because the whole area is beginning to flood. Mark also wants to spread the word about protecting these fantastic animals. Big snakes are widely feared and are often killed on sight, but Mark hopes the farm workers will leave anacondas alone in the future. And the two guys who are helping me dig were being braver than they would ordinarily be under the circumstances. And when we got the snake out, a lot of the people who were helping us, uh, equipment carriers and all of them, wanted to come and, and touch it now that it was a snake that was under control. I think the anaconda's quite enjoying it, actually. I've never seen the world from up here. If there's one place not to be with a large anaconda, it's in deep water. The tide has risen high enough to get a bigger boat up to the beach, but no one in the wheelhouse is expecting a 16 and a half foot snake through the window. <laughs> And where the anaconda goes, Mark O'Shea will follow. <laughs> Weighing anacondas in the field is no easy matter. Back at the ranch, Mark shows how. The middle first. First, take the weight of one Mark O'Shea. Then add one very large snake. That's something you're going to have to get ready to weigh us because I'm not able to hold it for long. Okay, is it on? Not exactly. I've got the trial. I've got that's a head. Give me the head. Give me the head back. Give me the head back. Okay, I've got it. Okay. 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 Uh, 
that's it. Is that it? Okay, how's okay. it? Okay. Finally, <laughs> subtract one Marc O'Shea. <laughs> The green anaconda weighs in at a mammoth 160 pounds, one of the heaviest Mark has ever caught in all his journeys to the Amazon. A blood sample is the beginning of Mark's plan to map the genetic relationships of all the anaconda species in the wild. Now. It's always a nice feeling to release something like that. Hang tight. Mark O'Shea has more excitement in store. So join him as he heads off to Brazil in search of the venomous Bushmaster. Don't miss it. Next, right here on Animal Planet. And check out Animal Planet on Discovery.com.